BTEC Applied Science. This is for Unit 3, and it's a bit of practice with T tests. Okay, so this is probably, I reckon, the trickiest thing in Unit 3 if you're asked to do it. So let's have a bit of practice doing a T test. So, uh, is there a significant difference between two sets of data? Yes, we've got two lots of data. Is there a significant difference between them? For example, let's say you've got two schools. You've got school A and school B, and I want to know which school is better at maths. Okay, so what we do is we could give in a particular year group, we could give all of the students a maths test and then take a sample, or we could take a sample of students. Let's take 10 students from each school uh, and give them a maths test. Uh, and then work out the average. Now, if we work out the average, so you've got school A and school B. So the average for school A, yeah, uh, X bar, let's call it, that's for school A. And the average for school B, yeah, is uh, X B bar. There you go. So there's the two average marks. Now, is that enough to answer the question? Uh, you know, let's say school A, the average mark was 75. Uh, school B, the average mark was 80. Is school B better at maths? And, and basically, you don't know. It's not enough information. What about the standard deviation? Maybe in school B, there were a couple of very, very clever students who did really, really well. And so there was a larger standard deviation. Uh, what about the size of the sample? I mean, 10 students from each school, you know, that's going to make a difference. Maybe we should have taken 20 or 30 students. So the size of the sample has to be taken into account. The difference in the means, the difference in the average values, that's, if you like, that's our signal. But then there's other things which need to be taken into account which is like noise in the background. And that's the standard deviation. You've got to take that into account. The size of the sample, you've got to take that into account. So what we do is we do a t-test, which takes into account these extra things. Here's a, an example, which is a bit more like something that you might get in the exam. A student wants to know if there's a significant difference in the number of daisies in two fields, A and B. So field A, uh, what they do is they take five samples using a quadrat, five random samples. You know how to take a random sample, don't you? Uh, from field A, from field B, and these are her results, the number of daisies in each quadrat. So just looking at those, do you think there is a significant difference? Look at those numbers. What do you reckon? Is there a significant difference? I'm looking at them and I'm thinking there might be. You know, if, if just without even working it out, I can tell that the average for field A will be bigger than the average for field B. But then I'm thinking to myself, well, what about the deviation, the standard deviation? What about the fact that there's only five samples from each field? So I need some way of taking this into account uh, statistically, not just what Dave thinks, but let's do a mathematical test. And that's uh, it's going to be a two sample independent t-test because we've got two lots of samples which have nothing to do with each other. So we're going to do a two sample independent t-test, which is the only one that you'll do. So how do we do it? We start with a null hypothesis. My null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference. And then we are going to test our null hypothesis to see if it's probably true or probably false. So my null hypothesis, there is no significant difference. Then we use the data to calculate the T value. The T value, if you like, is the difference which takes into account all those extra things. Yes. So if we get a big T value, then there's a big difference and there's probably a significant difference. If we get a small T value, 
then uh, there's a small difference. There's probably not a significant difference. A significant difference means that something is affecting what's going on. Yes, maybe the, the soil has more nutrients in it. Maybe that field gets more sunshine, something like that. So uh, if the T value is less than something called the critical value, then we cannot reject the null hypothesis. In other words, if the T value is less than a certain value that we're going to look up in a table called the critical value, then there's a, a decent chance that there is no significant difference. If the T value is bigger than the critical value that we're going to look up in the table, then we probably can reject the null hypothesis. There's a, uh, the way that we're going to do it, there's a 95% probability that the difference is significant. How do we work out the T value? So, will you have to do all of this in the exam? And I would say no, at least on the past papers that I've seen. There's bits and pieces of it which you may have to work out. You might have to work out a standard deviation. Uh, you may have to work out the means. There'll be bits and pieces of it. What's going on in this equation? Well, at the top is just the mean values. So the average value of field A, the average value of field B. So X1 bar, X2 bar, they're the mean values. So on the top is the difference between the mean values. That is our signal, if you like, the information pointing to the difference. Uh, underneath, okay, is the, the noise, the stuff that we have to take into account. For standard deviation, I've always used sigma for standard deviation, this Greek letter. Sometimes it's a little s for standard deviation. So sigma 1 squared divided by n1. n is just the number of samples, so 5 for our, for our daisies. Yeah, uh, And that's the equation. So we've got mean values, we've got standard deviations, we've got the number of samples, bung them in the equation. Uh, online, on Tinternet, there's actually calculators. You just put the data in and it works it all out for you. Very nice. So there's field A, there's field B. I've worked out the average values, yes. Uh, I've worked out the standard deviation for field A. Uh, how did I do that? Well, that's the equation for standard deviation. So that this xi, this thing here, xi, just means uh, you do it for the first one, and then you do it for two, and then you do it for three, and then you do it for four, and you do it for five. So for all of the different values, i is from one to five, you work out the difference between it and the average, and then you square it, okay? Uh, you divide by n equals 1, where n is the number of samples, so you would divide by 4. Uh, if it's samples, then it's little n. If you were doing it for the whole population, then it's big N, and you don't take away 1. Okay. So in this particular case, we're doing it for samples, so it's little n, the number of samples, minus 1. If we were doing it for the whole population, uh, then big N and you don't take away one. Uh, you'll probably do the N minus one. OK, so uh, you can see my sums there and 3.39. So my standard deviation is 3.39. Uh, what I would like you to do is work out the standard deviation for field B. So pause the video, pen, paper, calculator. Don't be lazy. Work it out. The standard deviation for field B. OK, so um, that's sigma 2. Um, now we can bung everything in this equation. We know x1 bar, we know x2 bar, uh, we know my standard deviations. We've got n1 and n2. Bung it in that equation uh, and you get 2.11. So my t value is 2.11. Uh, so what? Well, now I need to know my critical value and we look it up in a table. Uh, 
I would say you probably won't be given the whole table. I would say when we use this table, we will only ever use this column here, which is the 0 0.05, which is 95% confidence. It's 95% probability that our conclusion is okay. So 0 0.05, that's the only column we will ever use. Uh, the degrees of freedom, a little bit tricky this, it's the total number of samples uh, minus the number of data sets. Okay, so 10 samples in total, two columns, two data sets. So my degrees of freedom is eight in this particular case. And so we go across, my critical value is 2.306. So if the t-value is less than the critical value, then we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So my t-value is 2.11. My critical value is 2.306. We cannot reject the null hypothesis. Okay. Um, it may be the case the t-value is actually pretty close to the critical value. It may be the case that the difference is significant, but we cannot definitely say that it is significant, okay? We cannot reject the null hypothesis. We cannot say for sure that there is a significant difference in the number of daisies in fields A and B. If there was a difference, by the way, it might be due to the amount of shade, it might be the amount of nutrients in the soil, it might be human influence, for example, people walking over a footpath or something like that. But in this particular case, because our T value is less than the critical value, we cannot say for sure that there is a significant difference.